the way, right? In a lake that has so much grass, once that grass is gone, your timber becomes like like a magnet. Uh, and particularly here, we don't have a whole heck of a lot. There's only a couple areas here where we have a couple decent laydowns, so they're pretty <laughs> they're pretty darn reliable. It's January. It's January for me here. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy uh, 2020. Sounds so futuristic to me. Um, but anyway, guys, um, very fortunate. In in many years past, by this point in the year, all of the lakes, just about all the lakes that I uh, would fish would be uh, frozen over, and some of them particularly thick. And I don't do ice fishing. I like to take the winter off, but as you can see, that is not the case yet. Uh, things have been relatively mild. And uh, today we actually have a very mild day. It's going to be in the low 50s. Today is uh, January 4th. Uh, right now it's about 1 p.m. And I guess that's all we really need to cover, guys. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, I'm going to be throwing... I'm going to actually... Let me. Well, let me say this before you get started. I'm going to come at them from two approaches. This time of year, I have all the patience in the world with my big baits. It's just the water temp is super uh, low. And I find it very, very easily to be... Uh, it's not even disciplined this time of year. When it's cold out... I just crawl them and it doesn't bother me at all. Other times of the year when it's not quite cold, it's hard for me to go slow. This time of the year, it's just so easy. I could take you know, five, six, seven minutes per retrieve, per cast on my big swim baits. Um, the other way I'm gonna go at them, guys, is, uh, and I haven't done this in a long time, but I just picked up a couple jerk baits. And so I'm just gonna integrate those. Um, I'm not gonna do really one or the other. I'm gonna cover prime areas with the big baits first. Always looking for that giant bite. And then before I leave, if it's an area that's conducive to the jerkbait, I'm going to use the jerkbait as well. Oh, and one last thing. I have that new uh, Chase Baits Mud Bug. I was trying to think of the name of it. The new Chase Baits Mud Bug, which I'm really, really excited to use. It looks awesome. It's got that TPE, like super stretchy material. It kind of floats on its own. Uh, I, I think it's one of the better craws to hit the market in years. And so I brought that. And that's something else I'm going to be using heavy today. So... Primarily the big soft swim baits really slow the crawfish also super slow and just kind of dead sticking it down there And then uh, in areas where it makes sense uh, gonna be using some uh, jerk baits We'll see what happens. I'm just noticing that not all the lake is gonna be available to me It looked like there was some extra mist out there. and Now I'm seeing why I have about You can see right there is a the start of an ice line so that's all right. I still have a, a decent portion of the lake. It looks like I have about, uh, you guys can't see it. It wraps around the corner there, but I figure I probably have about a third to a half of the lake that's not iced over. So uh, that's fine, as long as we have some open water. But what that means, obviously, is that this water is right there. Uh, that top water temp is gonna be in the, in the low 30s, right? Because we're we have a mix of some that's that's being held frozen and a little bit that's thawed. So we're talking as cold as it gets prior to it being hard water. So uh, if I get one today, this will be the cold, probably the coldest water I've ever got a fish out of in soft water. And, and also it'll be the, uh, I guess you could say the latest, or I guess in this case the earliest in the year. I've never caught a bass uh, in January. Um, usually, like I said, it's frozen and I don't get out there until like, you know, late March, early April here in New Jersey. So. Would really love to get one today just to start off the year and to hit a new kind of goals to get one get a bass in january and hopefully a giant we'll see what happens right about you guys but for as much tackle as I have there's always that cardboard box of 
kind of the stuff that's on deck and the stuff I was messing around with last night. In addition to all the crap I have, you can see some of the stuff we were talking about before. Brand new Vision 110 Plus 2. There's that uh, Chase Bates Craw, got some real praise burritos, there's a Depths over there, 7.8 Easy Shiners, and a lot of stuff below it. So, anyway, this is the last of it. Where should we put you? Right on top. <laughs> so curious to see what the uh, water temp is. I assume it has to be right on the verge of freezing. I don't see how it's any other way when part of the lake is frozen. Um, but I, like I said, I typically just don't go out this late. I've never fished a partially, partially frozen lake. Now, this area here is usually very dense in grass. And interestingly, the grass is, um, looks like a lot of it's already died, which, it's interesting because most of the time when I fish lakes, lakes late in the season, or even if there's just one or two days that they've thawed, the grass is still there. It's like it doesn't die until like late into the winter. This grass, maybe this has to do with the particular species of grass it is. It's like it's cleared out. It's not there. So. Alright. I'm not sure even how to attack this. I guess let's get the sonar on. Let's see if we could chart some grass that's still around. I know from this lake, I, I'm familiar with the lake, so I know I'm, there's not a whole lot going on the way of structure here. There's like a little bit of structural changes, but not a whole lot. So it's really the, the key on the grass. It's a ton of grass here in the warm months, and they really, that's, you got to learn how to work that. So, same amount of fish are in the lake, but the cover that they primarily use is gone. So maybe they'll bunch up on that little structure there is. Who knows? We're going to learn as we go, guys. I have a, f a full, full... Three, three hours to figure this out. I'm actually going to start off with that, guys. More, more or less, just a couple of casts. Here's another. This is an awesome lure that I really haven't used a whole lot out of fear. One is because I don't think I don't know if it's been offered since the one time he released it. This one in the gold. This is a burrito baits, uh, seven and a half inch. Um, as you can see, line through shad. But this one's in the gold and the shiner color. Now I, I've seen him release the. Uh, the standard silver finish one multiple times um, but this golden one I, I, I don't know I, I don't remember seeing it after the first release so uh, the reason that I'm afraid is that there's lots of pickerel in here a lot of the places that most of the places I fish have a lot of pickerel and a line through with the pickerel just doesn't really add up in my book because the bait is actually protecting the hook in a way once that baits out of the way now you just have hook to line and in the pickerel's mouth that's just a recipe to cut your line right off but I haven't fished it so I'm gonna risk it you know it's like what's the good of having these baits if you're so afraid to use them you know it's like it's a rare bait I can't just replace it but what good is it doing me just sitting in a you know a container at home so I'm gonna put a little work in on with, with this one today too this one goes nice and slow like a Huddleston <laughs> Guys, first cast of the day with a uh, pretty big bait, seven and a half inch burrito. See, I'm kind of afraid of the pickerel because pickerel are a heck of a lot more comfortable in this cold water activity wise uh, than bass, I should say. The bass are there, but take a little bit more provocation. The pickerel, just as a species, you know, pickerel, pike, muskie. Cold water, um, you know, doesn't really slow them down as much. They're very comfortable in it. A lot of species of fish. So many people get giant, giant pickerel through the ice.
this here. It wasn't even really on my uh, game plan, but I had it tied on from last time. Burrito Baits Nacho. I remember specifically um, the owner of Burrito Baits, um, was it Gail Ratcliffe? Ratcliffe? Him in his video when he did on Instagram on this, he just specifically said it catches fish all year round. I remember him making reference to catching fish like in water temp in the 40s. So uh, to me, this is really just, and this is the design philosophy as per as per him, as per Burrito Baits, is it's basically like a soft rattle trap. Help this bait come through grass and stuff like that. Uh, they kind of act like deflectors and they, they bounce this thing off of rocks and grass and, and kind of parts through that stuff. I, I fish this a lot where you would fish a like a lipless crankbait, throw it out there, let it sink, you know, ticking into that grass, rip it out, keep ticking that grass. It's got a nice tight wiggle to it. Um, I've caught fish in sub 40 degree water on this bait, and I've caught fish in the middle of summer when it's 95 degrees out on this bait. So it works all year long. Uh, as cold as you want to fish it, as, as hot as you want to fish it, you'll be able to catch fish on this bait. That's the idea. It's a very tight, lively quiver. Um, just, just everything a rattle trap is, except the idea was just to have a uh, top hook variant of it and in a soft configuration rather than a hard configuration. So I like the top hook because you can bring this above grass and you can hit it over things and you just don't have those trebles hanging down. And even when you do pick up weeds, they're just a lot easier to free if you get them just on that one hook. Um, but of course the, the sound is completely different versus the standard rattle trap and all the, the rattling of the uh, rattles in there versus this one. Uh, this one here I got intentionally in a very kind of hot popping color. Uh, that one there is, I forget what it's called, chartreuse crappie or chartreuse gill, something like that. Anyway, they could totally see it. I would not be surprised at all um, if we got a pickerel on this. Or if we got a bite and then subsequently lost the lure from a pickerel uh, breaking us off. But uh, we're going to roll this guy into the mix today too. Rattle trap is one of those lures that, um, you know, it's funny because in winter everybody talks about slowing down and they're like, oh, you can't go slow enough. And then, but in cold water, people just still associate the rattle trap. People talk about finesse lures and your jigs and crawling your jigs and dead sticking. And then in another breath, some guys like, yeah, but you could always use a rattle trap, which is like the exact opposite. It's flashy, it's loud, it's not finesse, it's, you know, they have to speed up for it. Um, but they work. That's, that's just the deal, guys. They work. Something about them. Uh, it forces that fish. It's, it's not a feeding bite, whereas those slow presentations are a feeding bite. The fish has all the opportunity in the world to make its choice as to what it wants to do. And I believe that those fish that eat are legitimately looking to feed. Uh, the rattle trap and um, um, similar to the rattle trap, the, uh, the nacho here is, is a reaction bait, right? It's no different than a blade bait, right? So many people love blade baits in cold water. It's really associated with cold water. And a blade bait's moving fast as heck, right? It's going up fast, it's going down real fast. And so it's not about a, a hungry response, not about feeding response, it's just about that, that very fast reaction bite, even in icy cold water. So that's the same kind of premise here. Except blade baits, you're typically dropping on fish. You've graphed them, you see them, you know you're in the vicinity, now you just kind of have to irritate one of them into going for it. Uh, versus this here, and any rattle trap bait, it's, it's a search bait. You know, you're just long cast and just hoping you bring it close enough to somebody. Uh, but the trick is in the cold water, you know, when we talk about bringing it close to a fish, the trick is that the strike zone of any fish in the cold water has significantly diminished significantly so you really just by circumstance have to bring it in their face because they're not going to come you know they're not going to come from 10 feet away to chase this thing down or at least i don't think they would um they're just you know lethargic they're cold water creatures and they're opportunistic as is but slow them down with that cold water and it makes sense that they're not going to chase things all over the place i feel super confident that we're going to get uh oh i had someone take I had, probably a pickerel i had someone come up right up to the boat there. It's probably someone chasing the, um, the nacho here. And so the nacho, um, I'm working it above what used to be weeds and we'll have to see how much of them are still alive. I'm not looking to move it slow. I want to go kind of, this is what, a seven? This is a seven to two. 7.2 to one? Yeah. My uh, Tatula type R here. Um, 
I'm not, I don't want to go the in-between speed. I'm either going to appeal to the lethargic nature of fish and, and a feeding response, and on those lures, like my Huddleston or my Real Praise or my, my Jigs, I'm going to go stupid slow. But on the flip side, um, I'm going fast. You know, we're going to go for that blade bait, um, uh, rattle trap style bait, which is, I don't want to go at a mid-speed. I want to go at a very fast speed. To the, they're either on it or they're not. So that's really the only other option this time of year. You're either going to force that aggressive, instantaneous bite, or you're not. Uh, and the other fish might be fish that are just the only way they're going to feed is opportunistic feeding and taking advantage of those very, 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 very slowly moving baits. So I'm not looking to go in the middle. Guys, let's move to uh, one of the bigger things that I'm, I have on today. I guess this is about the same size as that burrito baits. This is a. Uh, I love this one. This one here is so beautiful, man. Really, really got this 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 year. I really got into um, these real praise, and man, he just does such a fantastic job with the paint. Beautiful lures and great action. I mean, that's really the, the main thing. Is first it's great action, but. Apart from that, they are beautiful lures. Okay. Heard my battery just die there. Let's swap batteries. Both could probably stand to be changed. First time I've messed with these reels in forever, guys. I have two of the uh, these older Chronarchs, the white generation ones. Here's a 201E7, and here's a uh, 51. Yeah, 51E. And um, I want to use this one here. It's a little bit lighter spool, you know, the smaller reel. I have braid on there going to a, I got on a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. This one here, I think had 15 mono. And so basically I just want to have this a little bit better casting one with lighter lures. And I already got the, uh, the fluoro in place. And I'm going to tie this, or not tie it, I'm going to set this up on a rod. I reviewed this rod years ago. It is a fantastic rod. It's just that I've done just don't do a whole lot of uh, jerk baiting, uh, traditional bait fishing anymore, particularly jerk baiting. But uh, this is a fantastic rod, Akuma TCS crank jerk bait. So, this one called the Sutton Plus. Yeah, the, um, the 701 Medium Plus. I remember loving the action of this rod. It loads up so well. So I'm kind of, um, I'm excited, actually. I haven't thrown a jerk bait in forever. I throw traditional lures to follow up my big baits whenever I'm going to leave a spot, a, like a known spot that I feel really good about. I like to cover it with my big stuff first, but I don't like to leave unless I've also hit it with traditional baits. Uh, to me, that just makes sense. You know, I'm not like a die-hard big baiter, whereas that's all I'll throw. My main goal is a big fish. Um, I don't really care how it comes. I believe, and, and through my experience in the uh, about six years of throwing big baits now, my, that it holds up in my data. The bigger lures have consistently caught me more big fish than I ever caught when I was just throwing traditional baits. So it's it's really happening. But the the flip side is that if some of those times where I'm throwing my big baits and then before I leave a spot, I throw on a traditional size lure. And I've also gotten some of my biggest fish that way. It just stands to reason that if you force it, if you're, you know what I'm saying? It's like not every big fish is going to eat a big bait. That's a fact. Nobody can argue that. I think it hedges your bets, but if you leave a spot and don't show them that option, you're doing just that. You're, you're limiting your options. And so, like I said, to me, the main thing is not to catch a big fish on a big bait. My main interest is just catching big fish. So we start with the big baits, and then before leaving, we roll into the traditional size baits. So, uh, okay, I think I'm all set. So there it is. This is my first, uh, I have lots of jerk baits, but I just, for the hell of it, the other day I bought a Vision 110, because I wanted one that went a little bit deeper, and I love this plus two. This one goes down to, they got it right here on the back, guys. You can see right there, the 110 plus two gets down to about 12 feet versus nine of the plus one and six for the standard. 
and I am loving this color. It's a Mega Bass. It was Gizzard. Oh, I love it. So there it is, guys. The Vision 110 MB Gizzard, Mega Bass Gizzard, and Jesus, this is just a sweet, sweet color. Look at that little kind of pink line running down the middle. The bottom is like an iridescent, like a little bit of uh, purple and blue in that white. Rolling to that back, it's see-through, but not too much. Just a sweet, sweet color. I love it. The reason I got the Vision 110 Plus 2 is specifically I was thinking about this lake and another lake that I fish in. This time of year, right before everything uh, ice is over, that's where I'm always graphing fish. I'm always seeing them in like the uh, like 10 to 15 foot range. So um, I just figured, let me try this Plus 2. Makes sense. Now I can't find any fish. Last time I was here, there was just stacks of fish. I really want to get down in those weeds, and I have a, a HUD-68 tied on right now, but I want something a little bit more streamlined. Yeah, I want something a little bit more streamlined. So I also have rigged up as a uh, Kitek Easy Shiner 7.8, and I really like these Easy Shiners because you can crawl them appreciably slower than you can the Swing Impact Fats. Uh, the new Swing Impact Fats 6.8s and 7.8s, just because there's more mass to it and everything kind of gets, you know, scaled up a little bit, you can't crawl them like you used to crawl, like to say the small ones, the 4.8s and the 5.8s, particularly the 4.8s. I mean, it's like if you're turning the reel handle, that tail's kicking. It was always ridiculous. And I utilized that in the cold uh, months, so I had hoped that the larger ones would be able to do it, but I kind of figured just as they scaled things up, you'd have to go a little bit faster, and you do. But the, uh, the Easy Shiner, just being a more narrow lure and everything about it, even the way it tapers down, even scaled up into its larger size here in the 7.8, you can go pretty painfully slow with these and still get the kicking action much slower than you can with the Swing Impact Fat in the equivalent size. So I'm going to tie this one on right here. It's also, as you can see, of course, very, very streamlined. It's not really a big bait when you think about it. I mean, it doesn't have a whole heck of a lot more profile than, like, say, some of our big worms. I mean, like a 12-inch a jelly worm or something like that. I mean, yeah, it's definitely thicker, but it's not, even though it's it's a 7.8 lure, it's, it doesn't have nearly the profile of some of it. I mean, it doesn't even have nearly the profile of a uh, 68 Special. 68 Special must be, might be shorter, but it's just a whole lot more, yeah, a decent amount more going on in the midsection. Anyway, just my perspective. I'm going to take off my 68 and uh, put on this Easy Shiner. Another thing, guys, I don't know if I already mentioned it in the video, but uh, I like to actually tie the smallest hook that I can on. I know people like to, I think High Tech says to use the, uh, the 10 aught on here. I don't know if it's the 10 aught or the 8 aught, but I actually bring it down to the 6 aught. This is a 1 quarter ounce weight. And you can go really, really slow with this thing. It's just enough weight to make it fall and to swim down seductively. Um, but it keeps that fall nice and slow. Let's see here, hold on, let me just tie my knot. And uh, it just doesn't show as much hook, and it's still the hook still kicks out very, very easily. Um, that's just my thing. I just, I like using the smallest hook that I can get away with. I mean, the 6 uh, beast is still its still a beast hook. It's a super stout, strong hook. You're not giving up uh, strength of hook. I've never heard of anybody really bending out a beast hook. And I just don't feel like the large ones are necessary. Hookup is great. Uh, just less invasive, visually. And the main thing is, at least on these weighted ones, I like that quarter ounce. Super, super slow fall. It just gives a better action on the bottom too. It's not, you know, like falling into the cracks and crevices. Almost like, you know, you're crawling like a, like a HUD. People like to go with those ready to fall fives because they don't like sink into the nooks and crannies of rocks so quickly. Same reason I like doing this. I like going with these lighter swim bait hooks. There's no, um,
Well guys, I only have maybe about uh, another half hour of light left. Uh, so far, um, all I got was one bump, which I'm almost positive was from a pick roll, just the, the sharpness of the strike, the way it put slack in it. And I was using one of my brighter uh, reaction lures, that's the uh, Burrito Baits Nacho. So that was a little pop from the side, and, and that's it. That's all I got so far today. Um, I don't mind, you know, of course I always want to get a fish and, and get a big fish, but uh, three hours on the water uh, in, in very cold temps. Uh, we're looking at, you know, right on the verge of freezing with half the lake being frozen. It's not a terribly long period of time. And uh, the main thing is I was hoping to see some fish as I have uh, the past couple weeks. I was hoping to see some fish uh, suspending. My friend just uh, picked up one of spinnerbait a couple weeks ago. And uh, it was very similar water temps actually because a couple weeks ago it was colder. And the last couple weeks it's actually warmed up a little bit. So we're further into the year but the water temp is temperature wise where it happened a few weeks ago. And he had got one just on a spinnerbait. Right, so those fish were suspending. I saw them on the graph, and he happened to be able to get one to go for a reaction lure, essentially. So I was really looking forward to coming out here and slinging my big baits and trying to get something going there, but also doing double duty and using that uh, that uh, Mega Bass, that Vision 110 Plus 2, getting it down to about 12 feet and just sticking it in their face. It's been a long time since I did any jerkbait fishing, and I figured that would be a, kind of a nice one-two punch. Appeal to the big fish, but also, you know, put one out there and try to get a few of those. And I just don't see them. I don't know. Uh, something has changed because with the water temp the same, the fish are not doing what they did a couple weeks ago. I I'm not graphing any fish. So they don't disappear, right? They don't leave the lake. My guess is either they're hugging, hugging the bottom super tight, but even then I should be able to see them. Um, the other option is they're really clinging towards the grass that's more alive than I thought it would be right now. And so I was playing that angle a little bit before. Um, and I was really trying to get this, uh, these Kytex, this... Uh, easy shiner. I was trying to snake it through and get get down there into the deeper weeds and just really, really work it through slowly. And uh, so I did that, and and then I just figured I'd make a pass over here because I have some timber over here. And and timber, you know, different than grass, which gets decrepit and you know just loses its its value as the water gets colder and as the season goes on. Timber is timber, right? Timber is attractive in the in the heat of summer and the, the dead of one winter. It's it's always there. It's always an ambush point. It's always something in the water to relate to. Uh, and it be, just, its value just goes up as the grass goes away, right? In a lake that has so much grass, once that grass is gone, your timber becomes like, like a magnet. Uh, and particularly here, we don't have a whole heck of a lot. There's only a couple areas here where we have a couple decent laydowns. So they're pretty, <laughs> they're pretty darn reliable. Speaking of which, Oh, I got a good one, guys. Oh, there we go. Get in that net, you. Oh. Yes. Yes. Just talking about timber. I'm in an area here where we have these little laydowns, talking about reliability. I don't want to sound professorial, guys. It's not like it's, it doesn't usually work out this well, but it sure as heck worked out this time. There we go. Woo, baby, there we go. This fish is ice cold, man. Straight 40 degree even water temp on that Easy Shiner 7.8. So nice. Let me get uh, the better camera rolling here and show you guys a little more. Beautiful. There we go. Starting off that year right. January 4th. Easy Shiner. 7.8. Nice way to start the year right there. High four, low five, we're about to find out. There we go. There we go, guys. 7.8, six quarter ounce. 
and we're about to see uh, what she's clocking in at. Solid fish though for sure. All right, we are zeroed. I gotta tell you, these little clip things make such a difference. Highly, highly recommend getting one of these quick clips. All right, first fish of 2020, five, five, eight on the button, guys. Very first bass of 2020, five and a half pounds. Pretty happy with that, won't lie. Pretty happy with that. And let's just get a quick length measurement here. All right, guys, so that's it. Doing it here in January. First fish of 2020. Solid five and a half, or uh, yeah, five and a half pound fish. What was that, 21? 21 and a half inches there? I just, I already forgot. On that Kitech Easy Shiner, slow, slow rolling it in and around the timber. That couldn't have worked out any better. I bid you adieu, you beautiful, beautiful girl there. May they only get bigger from here. Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to take this opportunity here to do a outro uh, because the light's getting low fast and I only have probably about another 20 minutes or, uh, or so before I have to get off the water. Um, I'd just like to recap that bite and why that all came together, at least why I think that came together. And you know what, as I do it, I'm going to make a cast here. So still rocking the, uh, the Kitech uh, Easy Shiner 7.8 by the way. And I had just actually laced that tail. I just took a Q-tip and I went around the perimeter of the tail with some uh, spike it in chartreuse. I just wanted to kind of mimic a bluegill's tail. I only did that about 10 minutes before I caught that fish. Not saying that that's anything, but just a little FYI. So um, here we are, guys. Why, why did that happen? Why do I think that it happened? I'm willing to share this one with you because I don't like to give a lot of advice unless I think there's some real meat behind it, but this is something that has played out over the years numerous times. In the very, very beginning of the year, early, early spring, when the water temp is in the 40s, and here at the very tail end of the year, super late fall and really the, the beginning of winter, when we get into the, the low 40s, most of the grass on my lakes, and this is, this is a pretty small place, maybe 50 acres, the grass is, is dying. I like to go around and see if there's any grass that's still alive and I did that today because there's different species of grass here. Now I don't know what they're all called but I just saw some of the grass in very areas where it's normally thick is gone. It's already dead and decrepit and it's just it's just not showing up on the sonar anymore. Some other areas, a different species of grass I'm sure, is still quite thick and vibrant. So what I like to do in the winter months is is focus on that. Now I should say in this lake here, this is not a lake that has like a structure. I don't have drop-offs and all this other stuff. It's a it's a northeast lake. It's uh it's kind of got like a muddy silty bottom. There's a couple little elevation changes, but there's not a whole lot. So but there is still grass and the fish of course while that's there they're gonna relate to it. So I put in the bulk of my time with the kind of the deep water because I want to go into the deepest water because that's gonna be the most temperature stable here in the winter different than shallow water, right? The shallow water is more prone to those temperature fluctuations when we have those very, very cold freezing nights and then it warms up a little bit. The deep water stays, you know, kind of even keel once you get into uh, the, the uh, late fall and the early winter. Uh, so I was focusing on that. Places where I still had grass, I was bringing it up. It was still pretty green and vibrant, surprisingly. So I was putting in my effort there, trying to get into that deep water, the grass, and working things weedless through things like the Kitech uh, Easy Shiner. I was also using my Huddleston 68. Um, that was pretty much it, just trying to get them down there and just really work them through slow because I felt those fish were condensed in there. I'll also mention that I had my sonar on and I was going all around the lake. I was kind of zigzagging because I was really kind of expecting to see quite a few fish suspending. 
I saw that a couple weeks ago and I had a friend with me who actually got one just suspending out in about 15 feet in, in open water and uh, but I didn't see anything. So the fish don't leave the lake and it begs the question then, well, where are they? I'm going all over and I see almost nothing. You know, just a couple hugging the bottom for the most part, the lake seems void of fish. Well, we know that's not the case. So I really then was kind of placing all my money on that deep water grass thinking that as less grass is available, as some of those other species of grass has died, the fish are going to focus on what's left and they're all congregating in there. The grass was still pretty green, still putting out oxygen, and I'm sure there's still a lot of bait fish that are hiding in there. So this is really like a magnet in the lake at this point in the year. But I fished that out for, I was trying that for about two hours and it just didn't yield anything. And that's fine, right? It's cold water temps, it's tough fishing. I don't really have the expectation that I'm gonna come and, you know, and beat them up here with these bigger baits, but that's where I was fishing. I took the last about 45 minutes though, then to focus on my Kind of my plan b which this time of year is also always going to be timber because as the grass dies and even as that grass that's still alive now pretty soon that grass is also going to die as the water temps fall and as the lake ice is over timber never changes right guys timber is there whether it's 90 degrees out or if it's 30 degrees out timber is always an attractive spot in the lake it's a uh, it's a point that they can just relate to to be next to something it's still a good ambush point that doesn't change timber is always viable and it just becomes more and more of like a magnetic uh, piece of cover as less and less is available in the lake. I don't have a lot of timber here. There's only a select few laydowns. So it really becomes an attractive point because it's not like they have a whole lot to choose from. So as the lake becomes more barren, it just makes sense to fish the timber and to fish it hard. Last part of the equation, guys, as I'm trying to appeal to a big fish always, right? I like my going after those, those bigger fish. And particularly in the cold water, strike zones are diminishing, their metabolism is slow, they're not going to go from 20 feet away to chase down a lure. I want to make it worth their effort, I want to appeal to those big fish, so of course, like I do all times of year, particularly in the winter, I'm going to throw big baits. Now the Kitec Easy Shiner that I'm fishing here, is not really a big bait, Oftentimes I'll do this with the 8 inch weedless HUD, but it's, it's not a small bait either, it is a pretty significant bait. So that's the last part of the equation, is bring it near timber, which is still going to be viable, even into the cold, cold water, have it weedless, and we're not really talking about weeds here, we're just talking about snagless, this way I could slowly work it over all that timber, and then make it a meal big enough that, you know, a fish is going to want to go over to it and eat it, and so hence the uh, Kitec Easy Shiner 7.8. And then it's the last part of the equation, guys, is the Easy Shiner swims really good at slow speeds. Uh, typically, I'll be using something with a vortex or type tail, like, like a huddle stem, because they're known to swim good at very slow speeds. But the, uh, the Kitec here also, different than the Swing Impact Fat, which I love, but the Swing Impact Fat in the big 7.8 inch size, it's not like the smaller sizes. So you have to go at a pretty good tick to get that thing to swim. As they scaled up those lures, there's just more plastic and you can't, can't go too slow not true of the easy shiner the easy shiner is just a thinner lure it's particularly near the tail it's very very thin still you can go i'm just guessing here but i'd say you can go at about half the speed that you need to go in the swing impact fat you can go about half that speed in the easy shiner and still get full kick i mean you just barely turn the handle and the tail is still kicking and that's what i wanted here in the cold water temps is pretty big lure weedless so I could rock it through the, the wood and something that I can crawl ever so slowly, keep it near them in these cold water temps, appeal to those lethargic fish, but still have it look like it's alive and kicking. Hence the Easy Shiner 7.8. So guys, that's a, uh, <laughs> a very long explanation here as we uh, sign off. But anyway, that was the deal. And uh, for anybody, you guys who have similar lakes, you're getting into that point of the year where your lakes are gonna ice over, give it a try. Try that deep water grass first. Look around in your sonar. Hey, if the fish are suspending, you know, try it. Get into even, you know, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, jerk baits. I actually had one rigged up. I was expecting to do some jerk bait fishing today. But if not, try that. Try that deep water grass, putting big weedless things in there. Bring it through nice and nice and slow. Give them a good opportunity to take it in. If nothing there, if nothing's doing, and if you have the timber, give that a try with some of your biggest, your biggest slow moving with still good kick, weedless baits. And uh, that's just been a, a combination for me, guys, in the, the years that I've been throwing these swim baits now, about six years. It produces every single year in the beginning of the year, in that early, early April, when the water's in the 40s, and at the end of the year, 
this is like a gimme. I know I'm going to get a few good fish doing this, so give it a try and hopefully it works. And I'm going to make a few more casts, but uh, if I don't get anything, guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, best of luck to everybody in 2020 in uh, cracking some new personal bests. Thanks for watching.